Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we're joined today by Ellen O'Brien Cushman, Bel Belmont's town clerk, to talk about how to vote in the April 6th town election. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So thank you so much for joining us, Ellen. Good morning. Um, with an override on the ballot and some competitive races, I know that yes. some people are, are wondering how they're going to go about voting this, this, this April 6th, or perhaps before. What's the process this year? So um, typically voters, whether they want to vote in person, which would be the only entitlement for that for a municipal election at this point is to go on election day. And the polls will be open at our usual eight places from seven in the morning until 8 p.m. Um, or people who choose to, you know, back off a little bit, be a little safer or maybe uh, experiencing a bit of COVID fear, which uh, is perfectly understandable, or people who are not able to be back at their polling place uh, during election hours, voting hours, or have a religious just conflict, um, those people, or have a disability, those people are already entitled to cast absentee ballots. So in uh, the February Belmont light bills this year, every uh, light bill and every household received from me a letter that also contained an application for absentee voting for the April 2021 election, as well as throughout the year in case another one just happens to come up. And they have to file them in writing. It requires the voter's signature. And there are deadlines to do that. What would happen is the ballot would be mailed to them at their location of choice. And then they're responsible for getting that ballot back to us by close of polls at election day. Okay. Ellen, can I ask, do you have any recommendations by when? about when people would yeah. make requests for absentee ballots? So I would say that 800 ballots went out yesterday. Today is March 10th. And 800 ballots went out yesterday all over town. Uh, another probably 150 requests have come in over the weekend and yesterday together. And they'll start going out today and tomorrow. And they go out in the order that we receive those requests. So um, the ballots must be mailed by the U.S. mail. And we all are experiencing, I'm sure you've paid bills or you've heard from people who are saying that their U.S. mail is a little bit delayed these days. So uh, the post office say, is saying that they want uh, to remind people that it's going to take about a week. They should uh, mail their ballots back if they're going to do so about a week ahead. So people should plan. If they're dropping off a, a request for us, it's going to take a week potentially for that ballot to get to them and then another week for them to get it back. So we are really pressed. Um, right now, the election is 20. So let me give you the real deadlines as well okay. as my advice. So the real deadline, um, based on uh, some changes that the legislature made uh, recently or in 2020, uh, all requests for absentee ballots are due by March 31st at 5 p.m., okay? So uh, that is coming up pretty quick. Now, if you order a ballot on March 31st, that's when you apply to us. And then we have to figure out how to get that ballot out to you using the mail. One can imagine that if it takes almost a week to get to you, Mike, there's a good chance that either it's gonna be late or you have no choice except to drop that ballot into my uh, secure drop box outside of town hall to get so it back actually, on time. So, so Ellen, that actually um, raised my, my next question about this process. Mm -hmm. Can the requests, as well as the ballots, once, once they're received, can they be drop, dropped in, in uh, your drop box? Yes. And that's what we always advise, especially when we start to get tight towards the time frame for the election. Okay. There is ease of like the presidential election. There were a couple of days after that allowed people who had mailed their ballots before the election for those ballots to be received and counted. That is not available for municipal elections. So all ballots have to be received by me um, and logged in by eight o'clock on April 6th. So the drop box is your best, most secure option. Okay. All right. So, so for anyone concerned about the mail, the drop box is there. Yes. Yes. Are all right. So I, I did want to ask, Ellen, the state legislature is considering legislation, and I understand that you've requested um, mm -hmm. this legislation as well, that would permanently authorize mail-in voting. Um, does that affect this election? Um, so the request that I made is a little bit different than okay. what you were talking about. There is okay. a very, so this best way to just go about it is to say that there are a lot 
very interested in elections and there's a group of people who are very interested in making uh, vote by mail uh, the kind of permanent state of entitlement here in Massachusetts. And that primarily is for all state elections uh, where there's a federal candidate or a state election primaries, et cetera. And uh, they are considering expanding that to include municipal elections as well. Okay. Uh, no, it wouldn't that action that they're considering and they're just starting that now does not have any effect directly on uh, what we're up to because we're, we're pretty far down the road. Um, our election is a very short period of time away. All of our deadlines are set. Candidates are done. Ballots are printed. Um, so it's uh, it's not like we are going to be able to open any other, um, you know, in-person sites at this point. Okay. So, so Ellen, if I'm planning to vote on election day, yeah. you know, what, what measures would I be likely to see in place because of the pandemic? And, and will they differ from what we've seen before? No, uh, they won't. Uh, in 20, we had four elections and we did sort of evolve slightly. Our first election was March 3rd, which was seems so far away. It was the presidential primary just before the pandemic fully hit. So um, discounting that one, we had an election in June, one in September and one in November. And I would say that we became pretty expert at running uh, elections and trying to keep people safe. And, and we're interested in keeping not just the voters safe, but our election workers safe. And so, yes, there are significant precautions taken if people have not voted recently there I'll see that we have separated sort of activities by six feet we're limiting the number of people who will be in the polling place at any one time the polling booths are separated again at least six feet and we're going to be monitoring uh, everything and wiping down everything so um, so we have as sanitized an environment as possible and um, until we all get our vaccinations and we're assuming that herd immunity exists uh, we all need masks. And um, that is a requirement uh, in the state. It is a requirement when you enter municipal buildings, etc. And uh, we're hoping that everyone will conform to the mask requirement in the state. Okay, Ellen, can you tell me what time the, the polls will be open? What the, what the, what the hours will be for, the, uh, for voting on election yes. day? Sure, Mike. Uh, polling locations open at 7 a.m. Uh, they close at 8 p.m. And for, for newcomers, you know, those who may not know what their customary polling location is. Um, mm -hmm. how, how does one find that information? So there are a couple ways. When someone is a new registered voter, they, no matter how they register to vote, they always receive a confirmation, a, a registration letter from the town clerk's office. And it indicates on the bottom of that letter exactly where they're supposed to vote. It gives them their precinct number as well as their address of the polling location. In addition, it's a uh, in the newspaper, it's on my website, www.belmont-ma.gov, and uh, search departments for town clerk. There's a lot of information about elections. Um, I would always recommend that people read the sample ballots. The specimen ballots have been posted to my website. Um, and the other thing in terms of voters in general, you have to know that uh, the law requires us to post certain signs around every polling location and in certain quantities. And one of the things we're required to post is the specimen ballot so that someone can observe that, really read it and digest it before they actually get into the polling location so they'll know how they perhaps want to vote. Because sometimes questions or candidates and the order in which people appear take people by surprise. And we don't want anyone who wants to vote candidates or the question to be unprepared. Everything, right, in this case, everything appears on the front of the ballot, Mike. Okay. So um, Ellen, anything else that we haven't covered that, that's important for people to know? Well, um, let's see, the deadline to register to vote and qualify uh, is coming up fast. It's okay. uh, to qualify for April 6th. It's actually on St. Patrick's Day on March 17th. So if you are a person who is perhaps a new, um, a new uh, U.S. citizen or a person who has hesitated and hasn't registered to vote yet and you do qualify, you're 18 years old, a citizen of the U.S. and you're living in Belmont, um, I would encourage you to get online and uh, and register to vote right now. It's www.registertovotema.com. And uh, you have to do that by the deadline. And uh, again, just to reaffirm, it's very important that people consider using that Dropbox right out in front of uh, the town clerk's office. It says town clerk mail on it. It's at the base of the stairs at the parking lot level. All right. Thank you so much, Ellen. I know that 
turnout is very important for this election and any election. And, and we, we all appreciate the work that your office does. Thank you. Take care. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Ellen.